sixth week where we're gonna begin our journey with Petsy. So what is Petsy? So Petsy is a collection of library, data structures, routines for solving large nonlinear algebraic systems. And the whole library is sort of built around the MPI interface, that is the message passing interface, which enables one to run their programs over multiple processors. And we'll see some examples of that. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's being used in a host of different toolkits, libraries such as Adflow, Codaster, CoolFluid, Phoenix, Fluidity, FreeFem, Moose, MoFem, OpenFoam, and so on. So this particular library offers you a lot of tools with which you can achieve great computational speed, efficient memory usage, all through a very easy interface through the C programming language. So we're working on Windows, but we can use the subsystem, the Windows subsystem for Linux to install Ubuntu as an app. So I have it installed already. So when I launch Ubuntu, I'll be greeted by this. So this is my desktop on work. I mean, this is my Linux sort of virtualization inside Windows. All the Linux com commands work quite well. So it's something Linux users don't have to do this. You can directly install Petsy. So let me just walk you through on how you would go around installing Petsy. So first of all, I'll assume you have GCC installed. So on my PC, I have GCC 7.5.0. And in Petsy on this website, you have to go to installation. All right. So how to go about installing this so first thing you have to download the thing so you have to install git you have to get the latest release and once you get the latest release you have to go to the you have to unzip the thing okay because you'll download it as a zip file once you unzip it you can configure it like this. You have to sort of build the set of files that you've downloaded, all right? So the configure statement tells what C compiler it has to use, what C++ compiler it has to use, what Fortran compiler it has to use, whether it has to download MPI, whether it has to download Blast and Lapak. So I'd suggest to keep the configure statement as it is shown so that the MPI that you may already have installed does not conflict with the MPI that you will install through this particular build. All right, so once you do that, you do a may call check and then you follow whatever you see on screen so eventually you will end up with lines such as this you will do this particular thing you will configure it with petsy arc and petsy dir which specifies the petsy directory and the petsy architecture so once you start installing you'll actually be prompted to use those so keep a note of those the 
variables that you will be requiring are let's see dir so for me it is installed inside this right and the other thing will be petc arc so it, it command not found but this is the thing so in fact the working directory for petc where it is installed it's petc dir slash petc arc slash bin and inside this so if i do this i will have all the different so inside this i will find mpi exec so i i must use this particular version of mpi to run the programs over multiple processors and in fact if i don't want to do that you may not wish to run this over multiple processors but and what's the use i mean the true power of petc comes in when you're running it on multiple processors so you must use this particular mpi ch or rather mpi exe uh, so you must use this particular mpi exec to run your program on how many processors you want all right so we'll we'll look into this a bit later but this petc dir and petc arc they will be prompted to you once you start installing all right so you can fetch which mpi version you're using but yeah i mean if you're building it like this you will have to use this particular mpi otherwise it will not sort of because it's not com the mpi that is already installed it's not compiled with petc rather petc is not compiled with that it will not run it on multiple processors well this is a very easy workaround you can go to your bash rc file and you can declare the mpi exec version to be this particular version instead of the default version but anyway all those are minor issues all right so nowadays you have petc running on ios or android so it's really going scalable you can use gpus uh, nvidia amd gpus so they've done a wonderful job of creating a massively scalable library and it's it's not a recent library it's i think the first release came from the year 1994 so it's something which is quite old and it has it has been developed over decades all right so yeah so let me go back to let me create a new folder and see so let me go to my let me make a new directory all right so now i've created a new directory and you can do two things you can of course work within this terminal if if you are comfortable with it you can use um, any editor so suppose i want to create a file um, let's say like like 29.c so or let's give it something more descriptive so the first example that i want to do is finding out the value of an exponential using a series approximation a maclaurin series so what i can do is i can use emacs and i can say taylor no not taylor exponential approx dot c so what this does is it will open the editor inside the terminal itself and if you're comfortable using emacs you can do all the programming here itself but if you're not comfortable doing this you can go to your dropbox directory i mean see not everyone may be comfortable doing things in in the terminal but you can go to the dropbox folder you can create the file over there and you can compile it 
simply on the terminal so what i mean is now i can go to the terminal and i can create a new file over here so i can call it something like this and i can use any editor that i want notepad plus plus is a very light editor and i can create the code over here as well all right so if i save this i should be able to see the uh, the file over here as well okay so if i do emacs expo so i have the hash include studio.h over here all right the color contrast is a bit off but that's okay so let me exit so i'll, I'll do it in over here no problem and we'll just use the terminal to compile our things so let me clear all this yeah. so we want to create a file which will help us approximate an exponential so the maclaurin series is as follows so e is summation 1 by n factorial n equal to 0 to infinity this is the way you have to define it so let us first create a c program which will help us to do this without using petsy and then we'll see the petsy version later so let us include math.h so int main return zero so now we need to declare some variables all right so int i double e so let us store the solution inside e and yeah let us declare it as zero let us initialize it as zero so um, let me change the theme all right this is a much better contrast so so what we can do is inside this program we must do a loop over this so we must declare what n is going to be so this, this sum is obviously we cannot do till infinity so let us do the sum till capital n all right so let me declare n as a integer as well all right so now we must do for i equal to zero i less than n i plus plus so then we must do e equal to e plus 1.0 divided by so we must do a factorial of i all right so we must not define what the factorial function will be because we don't have those predefined in c as such i mean of course you can use the GNU scientific library it's there's something called as the GSL which also gives you a host of uh, libraries which are useful for computations but anyway we don't need to do that so we need to define what this is and in the end let us we have to print so we'll do printf percentage f slash n and we have to print e so so far we have not defined what factorial will be so we must declare so long int and the reason i'm using long int because factorials tend to become really large after a while the the values of factorials it becomes really large so we will declare fact and it will take as an input integer let's say a all right so it must return something so return r so long ah, okay so we don't need to do this 
so the way to do a factorial is if a equals 0 right or a equals 1 then we must return one else we must return a times fact of a minus one so this is a recursive way of defining the factorial of a number a all right so this is nothing but recursion because once a is large is neither zero or one it will simply sup suppose a is three what happens suppose a is 3 so it will call fact 3 so so when we call fact 3 it will check whether 3 is 0 or 1 if it is not then it will go to this so it will then return 3 times fact 2 but 3 times fact 2 will involve 3 times 2 times fact 1 so if you unroll the function stack this is what you will see and something like this you might have done in your first year programming or even 11 12th but regardless i'm just showing you how one would go about doing this for those of you who have not done it but i highly recommend you grab hold of a c programming book to understand what is really going on so this is the factorial way of writing it and i'm assuming some working knowledge of c programming in this this is not really a course where you will learn C programming. All right. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Then we will go to our terminal. Let's do GCC. Then let me clear the screen. So GCC expo. All right. Let's simply do this. Let's see if there's some error. There's no error. Dot slash a dot out. But I have not defined what n is, so there will be an error. Okay, so I have not defined what n is. So I must define n as a certain number of terms. So let us say 5. Let me save this. So it gives us an approximation of 2.70833. So if I increase this, let's say to 10, let me recompile. And let me run the file we get a much better approximation in fact let us increase the number of um, decimal places that we can print so let us say 3.15 f so we'll get 15 decimal places so let me recompile all right so this is what the approximation is so this is how you can evaluate an exponential using plain c language so we have not done anything fantastic in fact we can use um, int arc c car star star arc v so we can pass command line arguments to do certain things so through this command line argument we can avoid doing this and we will simply declare n to be an integer but what we will do is we will pass how many number of terms we would like so n would be a to i of arg v1 so arg v will be storing as strings the things you will pass so arg v0 is always the name of the function arg v1 is the first argument that you give to the function so that is why so everything else will be treated as string so you have to use a to i so argument to integer all right so let's compile this and see how we can uh, do this so let me save this so let me do gcc okay and well the reason we have this error is uh, we've not included the standard library so hash include std lib h all right so now we should be fine excellent so now when we do this we must pass the number of arguments so i can pass 20 as the argument so 
so if i said 2 i get an approximation of 2 because when we have n equal to 2 what we have is e equal to 1 over 0 factorial plus 1 over 1 factorial which is 1 plus 1 is 2 so as we increase the number of terms so if i make it 5 we get this if i make it 20 we get this if i make it 50 we get this and yes this it does converge to the value of the exponential so suppose now you want to print out all the variables not the variables but the intermediate values as well so let us say you want to print the the partial sum right so we go over here so we say print f partial sum equal to percentage 3.15 f slash n and we will pass e right so let me recompile so that's the partial sum so the partial sum converges quite quickly so let us also print the iteration number iter percentage d slash t and i'll print the iteration number over here so this will allow us to see how those partial sums are evolving so let me compile it let me take 10 terms so first term 1 2 2.5 2.6 so very quickly you see you get 10 to the power minus 5 accuracy after just 9 terms right so what happens when we don't use long end i i want you to find this out if i don't use long end and let me just give you a quick answer to that but you should ideally go ahead and print them out so let me just print out percentage ld slash n and i'll say percentage t slash t i'll print i and i'll print fact i all right so let me comment out this line we don't need the partial sum i'm just trying to show you how large those integers are still it's not that large so maybe for 20 okay so the integers quickly become quite large and if you do not use a long end you'll run into floating or rather um overflow exceptions because you're overflowing the range that you can represent using the number of bytes gcc allocates to integers so that is why you need to use a long end great so one thing which i forgot to show we can find out the actual error what we can do is we can write down the exact value as returned by the math library as exponential of one and we can print out the error the absolute error as percentage e minus exponential of one so let us save this let me compile so the error is 10 to the power minus 7 or about a backslash n new line carriage let me recompile so the error is 10 to the power minus 7 so for 10 terms that is so let me say 20 terms 10 to the power minus 16 is machine precision so this small program helps us get the job done we have not made use of any multiprocessor things we just created a function and it uses recursion to find out factorials and we have used a very simple accumulator so this e is actually an accumulator because it's accumulating the partial sum finding out the partial sum this is how we accumulate so now we will move on to the parallel implementation using fetc let's create a new file and we call it expo fetc.c 
So we're gonna use the inbuilt Petsy data types and commands to find out the approximation for exponential. So first things first, hash include c dot h and main and and c so every sort of petsy code that you write has to eventually finish with return petsy finalize so this command helps you to gather all the threads so because you will be using the mpi either explicitly or implicitly with petsy you have to do this petsy finalize if you don't do this you will get very weird behavior now and then. So don't, don't forget to do this. Okay. So it's sort of almost mandatory. So then the next thing we will have will be Petsy initialize. Rather, before initializing, let us declare some variables. So the first variable will be the inbuilt data type Petsy error code IERR. So the petsy error code is something which is zero if everything is working properly if it doesn't work properly then it will return a one two depending on the uh, the error type that you encounter so it's ordinarily of type int but there is some additional data structures associated with the data type petsy error code so this is something which you'll be using as well then we need int rank to hold the rank of the processor that we're working with Additionally, we will need i for running a loop. So why do we bother with the rank? So suppose you want to find e equal to summation 1 by n factorial for n equal to 0 to 3. So essentially what we'll have 1 by 0 factorial plus 1 by 1 factorial plus 1 by 2 factorial plus 1 by 3 factorial. So what our strategy will be is to declare four processors four processes and each of these four processes will have a certain rank so there will be some process with rank 0 rank 1 rank 2 rank 3 right so once you do have these ranks then what will happen we would like to find the factorial of this rank or rather 1 by factorial of this rank 1 by factorial of this rank 1 by factorial of this rank and 1 by factorial of this rank so when we have once we have these four factorials we will then gather all the data that the different processes have so it will simply sum over all this so it is essentially it's a reduction operation over going from four processes to one process one central process okay this is what the strategy is so hence we need to hold the rank of the process inside this then what we will do is okay, we need a double data type for the eaprox and the local factorial okay so we will see what it means just in a moment then what we will do is initialize the so we will initialize petsy meaning it will create all the mpi um, back, uh, it will run in background all the MPI initialization steps. So, let's see, initialize the arguments to initialize will be and so the address of arc C, the address of arc B, then the petsy database, in this case it is null, then the help text. So this is how you would initialize. So most of the initializations it will look like this. Nothing much will change. Okay. And you can look in the function reference to see exactly what it does. Okay. It, it initializes the database and MPI and it has to be the very first line. It takes in inputs as arc C, arc B, the pointers to them, uh, the address of those, uh, then the database file and the help file.
you can also pass it as none but so if you type down the executable and write minus help it will push this string out of whatever you get So we have initialized this, we have created all the MPI things in the background, so we don't need to bother about all this. So after declaring this, we have to usually check for an error. If there is an error, so the way to do it is chk erq my er. So it checks whether there is an error. Okay. So now what we do is we will create the ranks. So we will create the ranks ERR equal to MPI form the rank. So it will create the different threads. Okay. And the way to declare this is PETC form world. Then we will pass the address of the rank. Then we will as usual check for error. So this particular line is important it will create all the threads that we need depending on how many threads we ask the OS to allocate to this particular um, program so it will store all the different ranks of the thread inside the address of rank so after this point we will have n number of threads working together not together but in parallel okay now we will do local fact equal to one so for each thread the factor has to initialize with one or i equal to two i less than rank plus one i plus plus then what we will do is local fact equal to local fact divided by i essentially what we are achieving through this so let us look at it so suppose the rank is 3 so then what is this so for i equal to 2 so let us see local fact is 1 initially so then so it enters the loop with i equal to 1 lf equal to 1 local fact equal to 1 when i equal to 2 it does local fact equal to local fact by i so local fact is 1 i is 2 so it does this so the loop will execute from 2 to rank plus 1 minus 1 so i equal to 2 i equal to rank plus 1 i less than 4 i plus plus so it will execute a loop going from i equal to 2 i equal to 3 that's it because the loop will execute till i less than 4 that is till i equal to 3 after this i equal to 3 the local factorial will become lf by i so lf is already 1 by 2 so 1 by 2 divided by 3 so it is 1 by 3 factorial so this is how we can achieve the local factorial using simple loop and this all will execute for all the different parallel threads that you will create it is not running for a single processor all this will execute for all the multiple processes that you will create so we have local fact and so what we can do now we can print out what rank of the thread is and what the factorial it has written let us do that so we will use let's see printf Let's see com self because for each thread it has to execute. So let's see printf has to execute for each thread. Otherwise it will show some behavior which is not controllable. We need to pass this definitely. Then as usual percentage d slash t percentage um, lf because we are directly finding out one by factorial. Right. So slash n then we'll say rank and local fact. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. Now before compiling this, we need to 
create a make file. I already created a make file. Let me open it with Notepad. The make file contains these lines. It will always contain these lines. It will contain the variables, the rules, and the target will be first to create the object file, and it will link the object file to the executable with the help of this. Then it will make use of the libraries of Petsy and finally it will remove the object file. We don't, because we don't need the object file, we just care about the exponent, uh, exponential, about the executor. Okay. So the way to run this make file is very simple. We have a target name as expo Petsy. So we just say make expo Petsy. Okay, there is an error. Let's see what the error is. So it is unused, no problem. Here there appears to be some error. Not called IERR, but okay. This should work. Great. So it's just showing a warning because E approximate we have not yet called, but that's okay. So now what we can do is we can use MPI to launch those many number of threads and find out the factorial for each thread. So the way to do it, I've shown this earlier as well. Let's see div. We have to use the appropriate MPICH, but see arc win MPI exec minus n, let's say four threads, and the executable is So we have created four threads so zero thread and one thread return one obviously two returns half three returns one by six so everything looks fine we can create more threads despite my computer being having four cores we can create eight we can create more than that as well and you can verify all these are correct and you will notice that the ranks are not printed in sequence and that is why that is because uh, once you call a printer, so all this is remember after initializing or declaring the number of threads, all this runs in parallel for all the threads. So whenever a certain thread is able to do this computation first and go to the sprint, it will execute this print state. For threads which will take more time, it will it will appear after a while. Okay? So there's no synchronization among the threads, and that's something which parallel programming you have to always account. Okay. There is no synchronization. Once you start doing this kind of things, you will quickly realize you have to do a lot of hard work to synchronize all the things. So you have to do a lot of thinking, pre-planning and all that. But anyway, so for now, we have all the different um, threads giving us all the different factorials. So now we must accumulate all the different factorials. So the way to do that in parallel environments is to reduce all the threads to a single thread. So IERR equal to MPI all reduce. So now to all reduce function, we must pass the local facts, the addresses of all the local facts. So local fact, we must pass the address of the variable where we want to store all the reduction variables. So after reducing all the local factorials, we want only one sum and that is EI. So we must pass the address. Of the approximate then we must pass how many um, what each local fact the how many elements each local factor it is one then mpi double that is the data type this is the data type of finally what kind of reduction we must do there are various kind of reduction there are products there are sums 
you must say that you must sum finally we must pass the convert all right once we've done this we can check for error all right so with the help of this function function call it will take all the local factorials do a sum and put it into em all right so finally we can simply print em so once we've gone obtained a single thread we can simply do print f percentage 3.5f slash n let's see Again, print it again. So, okay, so it's outputting the final print statement a bunch of times. So, we must do something about it. So, what can we do about it? So, what has happened is this has it has executed for all the number of threads that we have. So instead of this, we will use Percy printer, but we will use com world. So com self is using all the different threads. So self implies all the different threads that you have. But we will do this. Let's see print that. World. So when once we use world, it will use the merge thread to find uh, to only print it once. And using this, we gonna say e of x is percentage lf slash n, and we gonna print out the value of So, Petsy printf by passing com world, we're going to print out only one, the output from only one thread. Alright, let's see what we can get out of this. So, 2.18, let me take more decimals. Okay, let us see what the, let us copy this. E exact. Let us print out what E exact. Right. So if we use more number of threads, obviously the error will reduce. But yeah. So through this small program, I've shown you how to sort of use some simple aspects of MPA. And in case you're not so interested in all this, don't worry because once we start using Petsy, you will quickly see that even running programs using a single thread, they're very fast and very efficient. So in the later lectures, maybe we'll just focus with one thread. But if you are interested in speed, you can always do this MPA exec and allocate, allocate a large number of threads. But you know, later on, because you'll be using a bunch of inbuilt solvers, you can pass only one thread, you can get the solution, no problem. In the later programs, we'll not be using this kind of reductions and all this. Typically, we'll avoid doing all these reductions. So, whatever MPI business needs to be done will be handled by Petsy in an inbuilt fashion. We will, we will not be exposed to all this kind of uh, declarations, then merging and all this. So, but anyway, this lecture, I hope to have shown you how to include Petsy. This includes all the libraries inside this header file. I shown you how to initialize, how to declare error codes, how to print using different threads, how to reduce, um, and how to make a make file. So make file always will look something like this and how to execute how to compile it using a make file how to execute a file so it's a very sort of 
simple lecture it may be confusing in the beginning but once you start using it once you get um the hang of what mpi is this pro particular program will seem very easy even if you have not understood all of this completely in the next class we will not be exposing ourselves to all this um, thread splitting thread merging and all that well but all this will still exist because if you do use mpl Pretty will internally allocate to the solver whatever number of threads it has to be okay. so with this i end this uh, particular lecture and i will see you next time with a new lecture and we will actually solve a one dimensional problem using pretty bye